All right, uh, here's the second installment. Uh, we're going to talk about the negative voltage generation. Uh, the op amps are operated at uh, plus 30, minus 5. Uh, so that's the uh, uh, range of these op amps, or not the range of them, but that's how they're operated. The range of these op amps, these are TL081s, and they're able to handle plus and minus uh, 20 volts, um, or 40 volts total, okay? And so operating them at plus 30 and minus 5 is certainly within 40 volt range. So that's how these, these guys are operated. So we've already generated 30 volts. Now we need to generate minus 5 volts to, to operate the op amp. So, so how do we do that? Okay. And uh, that's going to be this little section down here at the uh, lower left section of the, uh, of the schematic. So uh, yeah, so let's take a look at that. All right. So before before we, we uh, get into the actual circuit, let me give you the concept. Um, this is a concept that you've probably seen a couple times in my videos if you've been watching them all. Um, one of them is a peak detector. Okay, so you have some AC signal coming in and you uh, pick up the peaks. I used a circuit like this when I did the audio uh, section and I wanted a uh, 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 to be able to grab the peak. Um, and uh, you've also seen a circuit like this uh, for AM detection in radios, uh, and so you're 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 bringing in AC and then you're you're rectifying it and turning it into a, a, a DC. So you may have a 455 kilohertz carrier here, and superimposed on that is is some type of um, AM modulation. You use a, a circuit like this, usually with a resistor to ground here as well, but a, a circuit like this to do AM detection. Okay, all right. So we're going to be using a circuit like this. We're going to be current limiting it, make sure that not a, not a whole lot of current goes through. So 82 ohms here, and we'll, we'll have a capacitor here and it'll come through. And so this thing will basically take whatever this voltage is here, it will peak detect it and turn it into a DC voltage. So it's basically rectifying the AC, right? So AC coming in, re-rectify re it and turn it into DC, right? And then if we have a DC voltage, well, um, we're not sure what DC voltage, so we could then run that into a Zener diode. And Zener diodes need to have some type of current regulation. And so we're going to use a 220 ohms with a 5.1 uh, Zener. So if we just connect these two together, uh, we have made ourselves a 5.1, a plus, plus 5.1 volt uh, power supply. Okay, we need enough, enough AC coming in here to do that. And we are, we are current limiting with... Um, with this 82 ohms, and we're current limiting with this 220. So the current capability of this, you know, you need to calculate of well, how much current do I really need at five volts? Um, but but you know, you could you could work this out, right? All right. So so this is how you you could make um, plus five volts. What if you need to make negative five volts? Well, you do the exact same circuit. Um, you just turn the diodes upside down. That's all you do. If you turn this diode upside down and you turn that diode upside down, you're done. Uh, now we have negative 5.1 volts, right? So don't be afraid of negative things. Um, sometimes they're hard to get your mind around, hard to grasp exactly what's going on because everything looks wrong, everything looks upside down. But uh, yeah, if you, uh, if you can understand this one, you certainly can understand this one. It just takes all the negative going peaks and stores negative vo voltages here. And so, you know, if this was a, a, an electrolytic capacitor, you would put the plus here, but on this one, you would put the plus here because you're going to have negative voltages coming out. And then once again, if we connect these two, we can use our Zener diodes upside down and generate negative five volts, right? So this is the circuit that's actually in the, uh, uh, actually in the uh, power supply. So let me show you that. Like I said, it's, it's down here, but let me, let me, let me redraw it. Okay, so I'm a little bit lazy, so instead of redrawing it, we'll just use this one because this is exactly what, it's, what it is. It's 82 ohms. This is uh, 47 microfarads. Okay, and this is 47 microfarads. And um, like I said, the plus is down here. On this one, they put the plus here. Um, and there's one more diode in here. Okay, so there's one more diode. So let's take a look at this one first. We only want plus things going through. 
And if we put a, a, a diode here, what would that diode do? Well, it won't allow any, any positives to go that direction, but will allow negatives to go that direction. And so it um, keeps any negatives from going there. And so everything will be pushed up. And so instead of uh, the negatives getting lost, they get pushed up. So this is something you'll need to kind of investigate on your own. Um, instead of uh, this, let's say this signal is plus and minus one, uh, plus and minus uh, 10 volts, let's say. So it's going to plus 10 and it's going to, to minus 10 around zero, right? When it comes to this capacitor, it's now just plus and minus 10. And we don't know where it can just it can just float around because we we have this uh, we have this here, but if we tell it, um, I don't I don't want any negative voltages, then that plus or minus ten will 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 still be there, but it'll be it'll be all above ground, okay, or it will actually be all above 0.7 volts, right? So this will be. Uh, 0.7 volts here, and so there'll be a little bit of negative voltages, but only 0.7 volts worth, so most of it will be up, right? So you'll actually get 20 volts here. It actually will, will push everything up. Instead of getting only 10 volts here, it pushes everything up and allows you to get this, this full voltage here. So this is kind of a strange concept, mm, one that's a little bit more difficult to understand, but uh, that's what this diode does. It's, it pushes everything, it references everything up. Right, so DC, DC references things. So that's what they've done here. They've put in a DC referencing, and uh, because everything's upside down, we need to turn this diode upside down as well, right? So now in, instead of everything being pushed up to positive uh, voltages, everything gets pushed down to negative voltages, and then you get a, a negative voltage over here. All right. So I'm sure they've chosen uh, this value here and, and values here to make sure that they're getting enough current and they're uh, getting their five volts that they need, right? So that's how the negative five volts is, is generated in the circuit. And um, there are additional circuits like this where you could, uh, 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 keep going. This this one rectifies it, but you, but there are doubling circuits and tripling circuits. And if you're interested in those, I show one of those in my microphone series um, when I talk about Rode microphones and uh, Neumann microphones. They have uh, they have circuits like this that uh, double and triple. Uh, voltages because they need to be able to generate uh, uh, high voltages. Uh, they use those to generate up to uh, 60, 70 volts. Um, and uh, so you can use these diode tricks and, and, and can, can, can take these and can ca cascade them and, and keep building up. You don't have, a, you don't have a, a capacitor until the end, but you use these capacitors to keep pushing it up. Like, just like this one pushed it up, then, then all the positives go through here, then you can like bring it around and push that up. Anyway, if you want to uh, see if I can remember to put a link in um, to that microphone series that tell you about these tell you about these circuits.